has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. Our every step unsettled the ancient earth. But we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity. Until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house. Opulent and imperial. It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Mega G-Wolf and welcome to Darkest Dungeon. That intro though sets up the atmosphere perfectly. So you may have seen this game quite a bit, uh, maybe on YouTube or on Twitch especially, because this was in early access for the longest time and then all of a sudden, well I say all of a sudden, for about a week or so it's been released. It's fully out now. So I thought I'd show it off. This is usually, I'd say this is a good game to basically do a let's play like a series on. I'm only going to do a single video though for now because I've got enough going on as it is. But uh, I thought I'd want to show off the game for those who don't know what it is. Kind of, you know, just present the game and be like, hey, this is pretty cool. You should check this out. Now, I did record this video before, but unfortunately, I didn't record the mouse cursor. So uh, some certain things were lost in translation, you could say, because I was referencing all this stuff that the cursor was pointing to because it is quite important to see it. And unfortunately, didn't kind of go through very well without the thing, so I'm gonna have to do it again and remember what I have and haven't mentioned um, because I'm gonna think to myself, oh no, I said that already, when really I'm thinking back to last time I played this. There's a lot of information to take in, the game is actually quite intricate, it's got a lot of stuff to think about, so uh, if there's any information you want to see, just pause it and you'll generally be able to gather what is going on. But points of interest are the torch up here, which is our light source. Uh, basically going to be uh, seeing the bar go down on there. We got our skills down here and our stats, our equipment and our map with also our inventory. So that's basically all you'll need to know to know where my mouse is being thrown as we go and do stuff. We're going to click on the next room to go to it and see what happens. Although this is very tutorial stuff so you're basically going to be learning as we go how the game is played in a way. Because we're going to get our first encounter, oh my god. Also, the guy, as you can hear, he's talking. He never shuts up. Which, to be fair, is pretty cool when you're playing the game. But because I'm doing this, I'm actually going to talk over him. And I swear to god, the writing in this game has been done in such a way that they had just, like, the biggest Theosaurus out. And they decided that they never wanted to say the same word in a sentence, ever. I swear to god, even the or and probably never appear more than twice in a sentence. It's ridiculous. It's a bit overwhelming, if anything. But it's really cool. The guy who does the voice is like, oh, heavenly. It's great. I love it. Really fits the atmosphere. But we're going to attack this guy. We're going to make him bleed and everything. Oh no, he's going to shank me. No, please don't shank me, bro. Oh, Jesus. Oh my god. 
So as you can see, here's our stats, our skills rather, and uh, they all have some icons that you don't quite get right away. So we're just going to use Smite 1 for the time being. Smack him with our sword. Down he goes. Yeah. I'm also going to use what little food we have to heal this guy up, because he's going to be bleeding as we go. That's always a fun time right there. Interactive objects. Yeah, these are things we can interact with as we go through the dungeon. We're going to check their valuables. Ooh! Not a bad find, honestly. Forgotten places. The stuff that you find in them is uh, pretty random, too, because the tutorial can give you a good boost and sometimes do nothing. So. These vermin oh, good. I wasn't surprised this time. I was yesterday. And their kind is no longer oh, I'm welcome. deep up, though. Boo. All right. So we have a few choices here. We could use Grape Shot Blast, which uh, the icons like the red icons you can see there because there are four like sections to be in we only have two party members right now but we can have four as you can see it's always it's, it's usually the maximum is 4v4 so because of all those red dots are connected you can see that it'll attack all of these lines so if we do that we'll attack both which is nice and we're just gonna hmm, I guess we'll try a stunning blow on him he's gonna be yeah he got stunned because he's he's a pain him so now he's got stun resistance for a turn. Flank of fire, no, please. So yeah, as you can see, this is just a tutorial, and there's like if you were explaining this game, there's a lot to explain. Ugh. There we go. No point in trying to stun him again. Oh no! The whips. They whip me good. Oh, and they make us bleed? Or was that the other guy? No, I think this was this guy who made us bleed. Yeah! Okay, the guy at the back's been taken care of. And when people muscles. die, when they are killed, they leave corpses, they get in the way. So it's probably a good thing I dealt with the guy in the back first. Oh no, am I taking double damage now? I don't know. Let's get rid of you though. You're a pain. No, not a point blank shot. Oh my god, Jesus! Whoa! And this is the tutorial! Like I said, this game is brutal sometimes. Brutally hard. Alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. Yeah. Oh wow, we got a shovel and everything. That's actually a pretty good find. And we've completed our quest. Just barely though. Let me guess. This is trapped. It's always trapped. Thank you. I don't need that though. <laughs> so let's see what spoils we got. Our quest reward was five thousand gold. That's pretty good. We got about 910 gold from various rewards we found. No heirlooms, though. Wow, I really did get shafted on that tutorial. And it affected our guys by giving Reynold a fear of beasts. And Dismass uh, can only... Oh, will not prayer or flagellate for stress relief. Uh, and has... Oh, extra move resist, which is nice. Because it means he won't get flung around in the party. Well, that's all right, isn't it? I mean, it wasn't the best intro, but I liked that. Welcome home. So, Such as it is. welcome to the main this hut. Hamlet, the main hub lines. area there. You'll see all of the now. all of your time preparing you to send your to people them. to their death. Welcome to the darkest YouTube Let's Play estate. As you can see. Oh, man. So, we have a few things to check out. The graveyard. This will be where Most all of your dudes go, obviously, when they die. That's going to be a very common thing. One of the things that I often say or see being said in a in a way is that this is basically the equivalent of its difficulty is what if Dark Souls was a turn-based RPG? Yes, pretty much that. So, people will be dying in here. On my Twitch channel, I've been doing a playthrough where I have Twitch members of, of like, the chat uh, go in as soldiers because you can rename everyone and they just they just die actually I've been doing pretty good on my on my twitch playthrough in time here is uh, basically the, the prologue videos that we failings. saw you saw the beginning one I didn't show the second one though because uh, I didn't want to take too much time up with that but you've got basically the questing and how you're going down and and basically progressing through the game and then the epilogue which i haven't seen yet i've only kind of seen the first areas so pretty cool and then over here we have the area where Women we can men, uh, fuel our bodies 
Of course. <laughs> and by that I mean fuel All the graveyard with bodies. Now that the road is Because we need to recruit these two heroes to fill out a party of four. And it's always the same, because this is still like tutorial stuff. But this is pretty cool. We've got a uh, Plague Doctor and a Vestal. And we can also upgrade this so that Word next time traveling. we have is in three distance. heroes available to be chosen and a increased this. roster of 12. And it uses these heirlooms down here to be able to upgrade them. So we need next time we'll need like eight of the deeds and eight crests to be able to upgrade next time. So that'll be cool. All right. So we've done everything that we can for this moment. And so now we embark. And this is where you choose where to go, like where to decide to... Oh, what is that? Oh my god. Yeah, not doing that. Um, so this will be our first area. The scouting of... I don't know, this is just the ruins, I think? Yeah. And you can see all the details of what it is. It's an apprentice level quest. It's short. There's no camping. Um, our goal there is to... 90% of the rooms, and this is what we'll be getting as a reward. So, you can build a party from the roster of people we have here. Now, depending on what their stats and moves are, will depend on where in the party they want to be. So, Reynold, for example, his preferred position is in the first two slots, and his preferred target is facing him, like right in front of him, basically. So, we would put him here. This mass is pretty good in the middle, and his preferred target is the second slot, so we'll probably put him here. Vane is pretty good at the back too, and he prefers the back group as well. Chances are... Ooh, I've got a different setup for this one for once. Okay, so Vestal is weird, because it looks like most of her abilities barring the mace basher at the back so oh and the hand of light so it really doesn't matter where you go i guess you can go out the back because you'll be mainly healing the usual suspects hey they have a little team name <laughs> i didn't know that actually all right so yeah so now we've set up our team we go to provisions which is basically us getting stuff for the journey gold. Later. Food. We're going to need a lot of food Blood. because food is a valuable resource. We're going to take a shovel, take a bandage and a key, and take about eight torches. About eight torches? Yeah. So anything you don't use, you do get refunded. Now, it's good to know in this game, it is good to know that retreating is an option. It's a very viable option, especially if you've got good dudes that you don't want to die. Uh, the only downside is, because of the provisions, it does cost a little bit to go in. It means that if you don't get the quest reward money, it can be a losing battle there. So you'll lose out on quite a bit of money. But it would it be worth it to try and save your dudes, basically? So we'll move to this next room and see what awaits. See what the ruins have. I, again, this is still kind of tutorial-y, in a way. So we unsalvaged the unburned torch. Which is pretty useful, at least, because now this thing is going down. As you can see, we're at 70 light. Being at 70 light increases our uh, stress. Um, it makes it so scouting appears less, but also uh, less monster surprises. And you wonder, maybe it's good to keep it lit up all the time. No, actually, going in the dark gives better rewards. But it's a lot more dangerous. Oh, no! They've changed position. I guess I can disorient... This dis, dis, disorientating blast. What does that do? Oh, it stuns him. Oh, and it pulls him forward. Interesting. I'm actually going to switch with you, though. And I will use Dazzling Light. Whoa! Hey, and it stunned. And also gave a bit of Torch Light, too, which is kind of nice. So my favorite move for a Crusader is Zealous Accusation. It, it's 40% less damage than, let's say, one of these guys. But it does so much damage to the front, too. I love it. It's so nice. And then we're going to use Grape Shot Blast and probably double kill. Oh, yeah, baby. That was awesome. We're going to open this chest. Now, when it comes to using items here, now sometimes you can actually get the option to drag an item here to be used on the object in question. Now you could drag a key, for example, but we're not going to do that because this doesn't visibly have a lock, so we don't have to worry about it. 
but certain other things... Ooh, a shovel. Nice. Certain other things will allow you to be able to use an item on them to better get rewards or to avoid a negative effect. Like this. Even now we can use our hands. It will take considerable passage. effort, which will probably stress us out, maybe hurt. But we have a shovel, so we'll just use the shovel. Much easier. Oh no! What is that in the bag? That is a acolyte. All the information about their resistances and what kind of stuff that you can expect from them can be found in like the map area when you hover over the enemies. Oh, dodgy they are. So what do we have available here? Blinding gas, plague grenade. Now the plague grenade is mainly for the back two, but I wouldn't mind using it on you. Plague, like blight and bleed are my two favorite things in this. Oh no, not stress. The torch is fading. How we got, oh wow. Hero surprise, but it's got monster accuracy and damage goes up. Oh dang, I didn't actually know that. I can use I can use a torch, so that's not too worried. But uh, I'm not too worried. That's not too worried. Stunning light. That's actually a pretty cool ability to get at the very beginning. I don't think I've had stunning light much. Bomb in the night. Except I dodge you. Graveyard slash. The graveyard slash. It was a monster mash. Confidence surges. Yeah. Now he's just a pile of bones. So that, the, the Blight should take care of this one. So I have, mm, I don't really have anything else to do. I can heal you. Ah, oh, for one. Wow. That was, I mean, it helps. Slowly, gently. There you go. All right. This Try and stun you. Taken. Yeah? Yeah. Stunned. And it gives us more life, which is nice. As the fiend nice. Falls, a faint hope blossoms. Anti-venom. Oh, cool. All right. That's nice. So, let's head on through here. What else did it say it was going to be? No, it's just an empty room. Alright, well, no scouting available here, it seems. So, we will go up. Because we only have to explore 90% of the rooms. So, we don't have to worry about anything else creeping up on us. Oh, no. No, please. No. The kleptomaniac is kicking in. It always happens there, too. Like, that is the one place it'll always happen. Let's collect ourselves. Also, we should probably light up our torch a bit. Yeah. We have extra chance of surprising the enemy. No, no! Hey, there we go, see? Extra chance to surprise the enemy. We get free, a free round of turns. So, basically, it's, it's... I don't think it's like... I don't think we have a free extra turn but we have a free round of turns so it's like basically we can all four take our turn without worrying about them doing anything to us Give them no not quarter. only that we got to stun the guy who's annoying and bleeds everyone and kill someone at the same time so if we focus our efforts in in a surprise we can actually basically reduce the amount of damage we get dealt done because these guys are annoying. Because they bleed. Of course. But yeah! Stab you! Now you see, this chest is important. Because as you can see, it has a keyhole. So, yourself, it will say a, a chest with your family's killer. Put the skeleton key in there. And it unlocks a hidden compartment. Full of goodies and treasure. It's good stuff. Alright, we'll go to this room next. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doesn't look like there's anything here yet. Oh, trap! <laughs> that was odd. Usually, it would give me some kind of scouting to be uh, be able to sense that trap. But it didn't do it this time. I don't know why. I'm okay with that, though. Usually, well, not usually. Sometimes, you can get scouting to basically pre-warn you about what is ahead. And you can kind of react accordingly. Hunger. So every now and then, the party will be hungry. And you can eat four food. It takes up four food from your stocks. But you regain about 5% health each. 
That would matter for these front two. But if you don't, you take 20 damage plus some stress damage. Or 20% damage plus some stress damage. So make sure you have food. Because goddamn, it's important. I'm also going to heal up with a bit of food there. Alright, there you go. There's some scouting. We have an obstacle and a battle room with some treasure. So we'll see what awaits for us in the darkest dungeon. Oh, you... Well, it's a good thing we brought an extra shovel. <laughs> I don't know if it in expects us to know that. Probably doesn't, honestly. Ooh, we're at 99 torch. Hopefully we'll be able to frighten these guys. No? All right. Well, it was worth it. Tempting goblet, no! So stress is when you ever see that number and that, that appear. That's stress. Stress is the most annoying thing in this game. I swear to God. Because once it's full, something will happen. And people can die of a heart attack. My favorite. I haven't had that happen to me yet. So I'm really looking forward to being able to see that in action. He said. I'm going to stun the hell out of you if I can. Just because you are annoying. Because he victory. raises stress specifically. Like it's an attack that goes for stress. And it is really annoying. Zealous accusation. I love this game though. The graphic style of it is, is really interesting. The atmosphere is just bleak, and, and I love it. It, it. The whole thing is very well done, and the guy who does the voice over is amazing. I just love the whole presentation of the game. It's really fun. Something nice to know is if something dies by blight, it actually doesn't leave a corpse. Or a crit. I think if you kill it with a crit, it doesn't leave a corpse too. So that's like, really nice. <laughs> I have no quarrel with you. Apparently he has one with me though. Their formation is broken. Yeah. Maintain the Act really picking on Dismas. Like, holy crap. Let's heal you up, bro. Yeah. Great yeah, get fucked. Alright, so you're my last target. Wah! That's what you get for attacking me so much. So something that will happen, that happens a lot. Success you see a chest so there, right? But it's like, quest complete, now you can return. No, you don't want to do that. You want to open this chest first. We don't have a key, so we can't unlock the hidden compartments. But we still got some pretty nice stuff anyway. So we will leave now. So we got our quest rewards, which pretty much pay down the, uh, the cost of what you got for provisions also some of the provisions we didn't use we get money back for as well as the gold in general we got common stone some nice crest and heirloom stuff so that was pretty good overall and wow a weak grip on life oh dear that's not good <laughs> when you actually get to zero health you don't die right away you have a grip to life kind of mechanic so it's like a random you. chance a that you're gonna just die if you get hit know. again at zero life so that means he basically has a lower chance of survival if he does that. So now that we're back after the first dungeon, we can basically stress relieve. Because everyone's stressed out, you can see the meter there. And we can go into something the like have been the dusted. Abbey. The and he can pray to the a higher Abbey power to relieve to some stress. Uh, this guy could go and, I don't know, drink his sorrows away in the tavern, for example. Fresh kegs, cards... So, and there you go. There's the basics of Darkest Dungeon. It's a really awesome game. I stream this and I plan to stream this more in the future. So if you want to see a bit more of the game, uh, head over to my Twitch channel every time I'm live on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at 9pm GMT. Uh, but apart from that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely say if you want a series in the future, I'll, I'll consider it for sure. Uh, it won't be for a little bit though, because I do have a lot of other stuff planned. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you've checked out the game or plan to, uh, go and tell me what you think about it in the comment section below. Throw us a like if you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Take care. Okay, thanks. Bye. Come on!